In this exciting episode of Mind Pump, remember, Mind Pump is the world's top fitness and health education and entertainment podcast. And this is a Q&A episode. This is where we answer fitness questions asked by our listeners. But the way we open the episode typically is with a 35 to 45 minute intro where we talk about current events. We catch up with each other. We mention our sponsors. So here's what went down in today's episode of Mind Pump. We start out by talking about despicable movie uh, rentals from back in the day, Girls Gone Wild and Bum Fights, and how that oh, guy made man. millions of dollars, and the creeps that bought those Bunch videos. of gross uh, dudes out there. Then I talked about how Bay Area alcohol consumption has increased by 42%. Makes a lot of sense. You guys mm. are stuck at home. You're sad. and you I'm drinking right now. Drink away your, your worries. Um, so we advise for people who are drinking to take something called Z-Biotics. Now, Z-Biotics is a genetically modified bacteria that you drink. So it's a little drink. You take it right before you drink alcohol. And what the bacteria does is it eats the byproduct of alcohol metabolism that tends to cause a lot of the negative side effects, like uh, like the feeling you get when you have a headache or bad gut or whatever. We've tested this product ourselves. Uh, We've actually pushed the limits. It really does work. You drink it before you drink. And then the next day, you feel remarkably much better than you would had you not taken this product. It's anyway, magical. because you're a Mind Pump listener, of course, you get a discount with this product. Just go to ZBiotics, that's Z B I O T I C S dot com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get 10% off all their products, including their three packs, six packs, and 12 packs. Then I talked about my lockdown health hacks. These are uh, things that I'm doing to boost my immune system, make myself feel better. I'm the most paranoid of the group. so All the woo-woo things. Yeah, but I'm also more consistent with my red light therapy. So photobiomodulation improves your cell's ability to use something called ATP. Now, what does that mean? It sounds fancy, but here's what it means. It means your skin looks better, muscles recover faster, um, you get a boost in your immune system. By the way, this is sounds crazy, but it's all backed by studies photobiomodulation has been studied since the 70s. Now, our favorite company uh, that produces what we think to be the best red light therapy you can buy for your home is Juve. Juve makes the best products. And you can buy small handheld products or larger uh, products that will shine this specific type of red light on your entire body. Now, of course, they're one of our sponsors, so we have a hookup for you. If you go to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a free MAPS Prime program with the purchase of $500 or more, plus free shipping. By the way, you can finance a lot of their products. So you can get 12 months, 0% APR financing for the Juve Go, Mini, and Solo. And then the bigger products that they have, you get 18 months of 0% APR for the Duo, Max, Quad, and Elite then Justin brought up an interesting fact about beaver butts. You won't want to miss that part. Oh, yeah. We talk about in and out uh, shutting their doors right now. That's kind of sad. I talked about Amazon uh, employees going on strike. Uh, we talked about government stimulus money and what that may mean. We speculate on what everybody's hair is going to look like when this is all over. Probably a lot less blondes. A lot like uh, Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be funny. Uh, we talked about a spouse questionnaire we did with our girlfriends and, and wives and how Adam lied on his. I talked about <laughs> Justin's first, uh, excuse me, Jessica's, not Justin's. <laughs> Jessica's first <laughs> trimester. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, I didn't bro. know I was pregnant. Sorry, bro. Uh, Jessica's first trimester and how she's a little nauseous, having a tough time. We talk about how Italy may be flattening the curve. Yes. And we give an update on homeschooling. So that's the first 42 minutes of the episode. Then we get into answering the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person says, look, you guys have talked about how the more muscle you have, the faster metabolism uh, can be. Like, uh, how does this work? How does this all work out? How does your metabolism get faster when you have more muscle? The next question, this person says, how can you tell the difference between a good at-home workout program and a bad one? Um, there's there's a few things you can look out for that'll tell you if your at-home workout program is just terrible. And of course, we talk about our MAPS Anywhere program, which we know to be one of the most effective at-home workout programs you could do. By the way, that one's still on sale. Use the code WHITE50. Um, then we get into the next question. What are some of your favorite healthy food 
swaps. So we talk about how you can make swaps for healthier, lower calorie options that still taste good. Since you're stick, stuck at home, you want your taste. Here's food. a secret: add bacon. There you go. Um, and then the final question: This person wants to know if we have any book recommendations during the uh, stay-at-home order. So we give our recommendations on our favorite books. Um, it's a new month. We're in April. That means we have a new promotion going on. Check this out. You guys are going to love this one. This These two programs haven't been on sale since early last year, okay? MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro, both programs, mm. 50% off. These are yes. correctional exercise-based programs. Here's the best part. You need zero equipment to work on your mobility. You need zero equipment to work on these correctional exercises. In both programs, you can identify movement pattern issues, and you can fix them through the prescriptions in each program for your specific issues. Both programs are highly tailored. In other words, you can go through the program, test your body out, and figure out what works best for you. Now, MAPS Prime is more specific to teaching you how to do your own specific priming warm-up before your workouts. MAPS Prime Pro is much more in the correctional direction where if you have like a bad shoulder or you need more, more hip mobility, you can get more specific. So both programs, 50% off all month long. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's M-A-P-S-F-I-T-N-E-S-S-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S.com and use the code PRIME50 for both programs for the discount. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. Doug, give us a thumbs up when uh, when we're sexy and hot. hot. No, give us a different hand signal. Give us... Um, yeah, there you, oh, there you go. There you go. Jazz hands. Remember like the bird. Durka, durka, oh, yes. durka, durka. You guys remember that? Yeah. Speaking of jazz, did you guys know that they did an analysis of Cardi B's music and they found that it was a combination of jazz and funk? So they call it junk. Junk. Yeah. <laughs> I like Dude, it. Good, I like it. Good dad joke. Did you see the uh, bar stools of that? It was like a little infant kid like watching a Cardi B video. No, oh, no. It, was, it was fantastic. It was just like like his eyes are this big and just like watching all the booties. Oh, Bro, what? Barstool what? Barstool's traffic has to be like through the roof of right course. now. It, they're just pumping it of out. Of course. They man. get all the best stuff. You want to escape. Did, did you see they uh they had a documentary on him? That just got released. Oh, on the dude that started oh, he's it. Promoting yeah, yeah. It. yeah. A lot of people talk shit. A lot of people talk shit. Is he like? I feel of like course. he's a yeah. he's a hated. They're guy. like they're like. Uh, yeah, pass. It's uh, quarantine's bad, but it's not that bad. Where I'm gonna watch somebody who made a business off of just reposting other people's shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know who? He, he's, Boring. Do you guys remember that? What's the guy's name? He he made millions of dollars, but he was so hated. That it, it ruined him. Uh, he was Girls making, Gone Wild guy? Yeah, that dude. Was it? Yeah. Yes. I knew it. He made Girls Gone Wild videos. My friend ordered it. Yeah, for, the younger, for the younger listeners, <laughs> these were videos you could order, and it was like, you know, it was like Mardi Gras parties or spring break, yeah. and, and then they'd come out with cameras, and they'd be like, flash this your boobs, and the yeah. girls would do it, and then they sold these videos. Yeah, they'd bring them back into like a uh, one of those RVs, you know? <sighs> Terrible. Hey, I got an idea. My, yeah. my and they signed. They, they would sign like release, you know, waivers, even though they were like smashed or whatever. My old partners and I hired that crew. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm in for a story. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. You hired? Yes. The, the... Girls Gone Wild guys. It was actually right after like his. <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> swear to God. Swear what were you to trying my, to do? My old partner. Guys Gone Wild? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> guys. Don't need, you don't need drug guys they for just that. just let it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, it's just it happens to be random that that's what they did. They had a connection with my old partner. In the, somebody say balls? In the marijuana balls. business. <laughs> And, Nobody buys that. And he knew them. He knew them personally. And of course, uh, he had like a big lawsuit and stuff that happened uh, after all that. Right? He made his millions, and then he had a big lawsuit. Yeah, because it was like some some. I think it had to do with some girl saying she was too drunk to sign it. And yeah, another girl said she was underage. Yeah, he had a bunch of shit that he went through. I mean, he still was filthy rich, but then uh, obviously he didn't have a lot of work after that. And m my partners at the time knew knew him. They were friends. And they, we hired their whole crew to come shoot a uh, marijuana video for us. That, What's a marijuana video? Like, so, like a music video? No, not a music <laughs> video. Like a, it was, so this was, he, this is what he did. This was his brilliant idea that this was a, I don't know. I think we sunk like a hundred thousand dollars into this thing and it never went anywhere. And the idea was we were, remember we were, uh, there was only two <clears throat> medical marijuana facilities 
uh, in the Bay Area before us, right? So yeah. we were one of the original, right. right? And, you know, back then it was like very, very gray and edgy and scary to be a part of it. And my partners were like really trying to push the envelope, like, and, and do different. Like, we were the first ones to do trailblazers. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> Literally. Right. <laughs> Innovators. Just blazers. <laughs> and just, just, yeah, uh, yeah. Hold the trail. Yeah, just blazers. Just, just blazers. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we were the, like the first to open up like a vape lounge. And he was trying to, so he spent all this money on making this like, hype video so he went and pitched it to all these networks in LA trying to get them to pick up a documentary so there mm. there's a there's like a super highly produced video I'm in it it's of course right I'm <laughs> working the place but and it was it was kind of a cool video but it to hype weed yeah well hype up you don't the, really need to hype no, 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 it's like no, the no. underground oh. business oh, okay. yeah, yeah it was the idea was to Oh, I see. Sell a network, on, which that shows there's a ton of them now. This yeah. was before any of it, so none uh, of this existed. Like yet. a reality uh, documentary. Yes, a reality uh, documentary of starting a cannabis club. That makes sense, of course. And so they shot yeah, all this. Sold a device. Right? Well, that was the, the the idea. He was, I think, he was just ahead of his time with yeah, it. Yeah, he probably was. And they at at the time that we were trying to do it, uh, so many people involved. He, he really uh, was blackballed in the industry because of it, because <clears throat> the people that were in it. Um, at that time, we're really trying to push it to legitimize it. Oh, and did he like emphasize on the making all money? The gangster and, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, rolling up in the, his X sixty three and <laughs> you know just balling out, partying, VIP limo stuff. Like you know, it wiping was, his butt with dollars. Yeah. <laughs> not oh, quite. Are, this is toilet paper. Yeah, not quite that bad. But I mean, <laughs> enough that I think uh, a lot of these uh, networks were like, uh, yeah, that's going to be a pass. It's a too racy. Yeah, it's going to be a pass. But I mean, years going to be a pass for me, dog. Yeah, <laughs> years later now. though, we saw a bunch come out. But that's funny you bring up that name, and I'm like, oh my Dude, god, that's so weird. It, we you know, when, to that. when people I appreciate get that Randy Jackson reference, you're actually, welcome. Yeah. When people make get mad at like people who make millions of dollars off of slimy shit, mm. I feel first off, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, you know, the dude that made the girl gone wide. They're wild, serving and eat. They're obviously well, serving. Well, well, what I mean is kind of that I is mean, like, is he any worse than any other porn well, you well, know, well, distributed out well, there? He's a p. Okay, yes, he's he's kind. Of, he's a sleazy piece of garbage, right? You yeah. wouldn't introduce him to any of your your family members or sister or whatever your wife or anything. He's like, a but, predator. But nobody puts any responsibility on the people that bought that shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like million, you, or the, the girls that you know are uh, taking all the clothes yeah, off. Yeah, like, like if you buy those videos, you're an asshole too, just as much as he is for making it. Like, remember this was a terrible. I remember this one. This one actually made an, the same another dude. Maybe it's the same guy. I don't know. A lot of money, and it's worse, in my opinion, than the girls gone wild videos. Do you guys remember bum fights? Yes. Oh man, that was huge. That was it was huge. Yeah, that was huge. for like a year. It was, that was terrible. Like the thing. There was there was a, a camera crew and a producer that would go around to homeless people and he would he would give them and I only laugh because the idea is so insane and terrible yeah. that you can't even believe it existed. It's like so like immoral. He would go up with to, with though you can't you have to admit a little bit of brilliance. Well, well yeah, I mean people. It's, I mean, it is. Like, people are gonna watch <laughs> I mean, it. Yeah. I say like, someone's gotta say it. Someone's gotta say it. Come on, I mean it's terrible. It is terrible, but it's brilliant at the same time. Well, I, mean, I mean, you think uh, you you the, a well, obviously he knew people would buy it. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Well, and and you knew that a lot of the bums would do it for sure <laughs> to get a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> bro, get I, food. Or I would. Get, it if was I, more, if bro, I was bumming it, bucks. I would. Bro, it was more like five bucks. No, he it would, wasn't. It was some of them were. No, it wasn't. No, well, it wasn't. Get, it was good money. <laughs> was it good well, money? Well, yeah, no, not, it wasn't like Mayweather money. Dude, <laughs> you know he saying? would like, say stuff like, "Pull oh, your man. teeth out." You know, if you pull your two, your two front teeth out, I'll give you you know fifty bucks. Yeah, it went it went crazy far, but it originally originally was you know they would approach and both would consent. Agree to it. There I would know. be there but would be there would be a, a win a winning. Sometimes, yeah. There's a lot of people. I, I know. I know that mentally ill is a majority of yeah. of of people that it are just homeless. feels bad. It's totally yeah. taking advantage. Doesn't it feel bad? Like watching. Like oh, oh yeah, it's man, terrible, dude. This makes me feel there's a bad. Lot of, there's a lot of businesses like that. Like I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do it. But you you can't just slimy ass stuff. But somebody's some going made, to. Some dude made millions of dollars. Yeah, off of doing that, and then I don't know. Of those. I don't know what happened to him after that, but he made a lot of money, you know, doing that. And like, here's here's an example. There's always these opportunities, right? And I think that it's just a reflection of society, right? Well, we, and we we just I mean, before we got on the mics, we we're talking about the the integrity that we have as as owners and a business and stuff. And you know, I even think about like 
you know, I knew that I should have bought all kinds of stock and alcohol before all this happened. Anytime something like oh, a, right. a, a pandemic like this yeah. happens or a world scare, like alcohol and cigarettes go right. through the roof. Well, let's take it. Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I remember in before 2008, before the big financial crash, I had friends that were getting into the, the, the loan business and they would tell me like how crazy it was. He's yeah. like, yeah, dude, you don't need to check anything. Just have them tell you how much they make. Yeah, getting people's yeah. loans. Oh, and just pump. I, I knew guys that I knew I knew guys that worked under me at, for short periods of time or worked at 24 Hour Fitness who they were sleaze balls. Let's let's be honest. I, you know, one dude I know who worked for me for a short period of time, and then you know we kind of got rid of him because he was you know he was a good salesperson, but he was just a slimy, just a sleaze ball. You know, yeah. some you wouldn't trust the guy. Anyway, he gets in the home loan business. This guy's making three quarters of a million dollars just slinging loans and it was just and i remember they would call maybe like, sal you make so much money do you come on I'm like, it doesn't feel yeah. it doesn't feel right you know what i mean it yeah, doesn't I mean, feel right too many red flags there's a lot of opportunities like that that tend to pop up yeah no i mean again i knew i knew to buy those would have been to buy the stock and i just couldn't get myself to do it knowing that you know profiting off of other people going out there and drinking themselves to death right now which you saw that right i think it was you who shared oh dude Alcohol consumption in the Bay Area uh, since the shelter in place kicked in mm -hmm. went up 40, I think 42%. That's huge. No, that makes sense. Yeah, of you, course it does. makes sense, dude. You're stressed, you're anxious, you're at home, and you're like, I just want to like chill for a bit. And alcohol is a very short-term solution for that, but I get it. I get it, dude. I, I find myself yeah. wanting- People I don't just get bored, dude. Oh. Drinking is like something to do for now, some people. Dude, what I, I don't have a problem with, though, is pitching those people on Z-Biotic. Well, hey, that's right. Because <laughs> you know I'm saying, like, hey, if you're going to go drink, that's right. you do all this, you may as well feel better. Hey, if, you, if you're going to yeah. do this, we recommend you don't. But if you're going to, you know, no judgment. Here, take this, you know, product. It'll help you not feel like dog shit. It's like the, the condom the for a hangover. <laughs> the, what? You know, what? I just came up with that. Oh, great. You know what? You know these get sent over to our partners. I'm going to have a phone call in fucking two weeks. Like, Z-Box is like, um, yeah, we'd really appreciate it if you don't I really appreciate reference you not, our brand as the um, condom of freaking drinking. Tying those two together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it's, Thanks yeah. a lot. That's yeah. not the way we want to be yeah. represented. We don't, yeah, we don't recommend sex with strangers. <laughs> However, you know, However Trojan, it is partying. No, you know what, though? Um, I wonder, actually, if their sales are blowing up. I would imagine, because it's- a, Alcohol it's a, or Z-Biotics? Z-Biotics. No, they are. I'm seeing- I'm seeing all kinds. I mean, we. I talk to the partners on a regular basis, and because it's an at home, it delivers to your house. You don't yeah. have to drive somewhere to and get it. A lot of it, people are drinking, right and now. you're drinking more, and for sure you feel like. Because here's what happens with alcohol: you drink because you feel bad, so you temporarily feel better, and then the next day you feel worse mm -hmm. than you did that day because of the toxic effects of alcohol. And so, a product like Zbiotics, well, my helps. You know, so I would imagine that they're they're. By the way, one of my predictions with Z, with a product like Zbiotics was. I wonder if it's going to, for some people, encourage more because they're like, oh, I feel okay. Now I can push more, well, of more alcohol. Of that's what, you know, everybody, that's, everybody, that's a, that's a human nature for us to I do know. that. My buddy, uh, you know, when, who we had on the show recently, he's got already a bunch of his athletes that are, you know, all the athletes are home. That's what they're doing. All the sports. Working teams. out and drinking. Oh, yeah. That's what they're all doing. Dude, when he tested it, what did he say to you? Unbelie we, he, unbelievable. You saw his post? Didn't you see his post just the other day? No. Are you yeah. not? You may not be following him. I don't know. If yeah, he follow. did. He posted all about it. Yeah, yeah. So he's already he already bought a bunch of cases himself. He's and already he, turned he some of his athletes like a, on it. And he doesn't have like a couple drinks. No, no, no. Yeah, he's a drinker. He went hard. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he. I mean, that's like ninety percent of his job <laughs> is networking with these athletes and taking them to Vegas and partying. Like so, that's why it was like it was so serendipitous. The timing that he came in was right when we were like really kicking off Z Biotic. And so to be able to introduce him to that was awesome because mm. I know he's for sure of all of my friends. I'm like, dude, oh. this somebody who's going to be able to to take this and like really know because he drinks. Oh, on, on it's that. part of his business. Yes. I mean, he's constantly yes. out there entertaining. No, he, you know, everybody. he, lo he yeah. loves. Yeah. It. It may, now, I, now here's one that I'm I'm I don't know if I wonder if the sales are up or down or flat or the same. Is cannabis because and I know I know the home delivery stuff it's, is still it's up like crazy. Is it? Yeah. You so know, I can't even get good weed right now. So we, yeah. I, I had Doug out of stock. I had Doug order for me before we went up to Tahoe, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I tried order. ordering through yeah. Doug's. Uh, they just called me the mule. Contact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why'd you have Doug was, order it? There was well, no good edibles. Left. He was still here. He was still here in San Jose. Uh, I was up in Tahoe. I didn't have anything. I didn't have bring my stash or anything. So I hadn't had I hadn't had anything to smoke for. Remember we were podcasting. I brought that up. I hadn't smoked. Justin sold me out. Said I had an edible. Yeah. Uh, and so I I called Doug. I said, Hey, before you come up, I said, Could you order? 
um, off of ease and get me um, uh, some some weed. And he's like, well, what do you want? And I'm like, I just took a picture real quick, screenshot it, and circled, you know, just give me what's available. And he's like, well, this is all they have. And I said, okay. Well, was it swag? No, it, it, was, it wasn't so much it was bad, even though I do want to comment on how shitty club weed is these days. The... Uh, it was a uh, pure CBD strain. Oh, they didn't have like a regular THC. Yeah, oh. sold out. Oh. Well, that's probably better for you anyway. So, yeah, yeah, it's true. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. No, well, free. well and, I, and I finally got some the other day, and it's still like the, so. The club stuff is terrible. So my consumption of cannabis way down because <clears throat> it makes me my tendency towards paranoia. And oh yeah, I can, I can imagine you, dude. Bro, You're already over the top paranoia. Uh, you don't want to add fuel to that dude, fire. I told you guys what I did. I did it. At, I did it. Uh, was like a week or two ago when I was, you know, self quarantining myself and I was feeling okay. You know, I wasn't really sick anymore, but I was still just being precautious. So I wasn't going around anyone. I had a vape pen, an old one. And I'm like, oh, you know what? You know, I'm feeling a little stressed. Maybe this will help. It was the opposite, dude. I hit that immediately. As soon as it kicked in, I'm like paranoid. And of course, this is a paranoid, you know, situation. I'm reading articles. I'm sitting there. I'm thinking about, oh my God, my parents. What if they die? What about my kids? Ah! And I'm sitting there watching. I'm, I, can we can we share with the audience what a what a paranoid emotional roller coaster you've been for dude, us for the like last month? Holy dude. Moses! This is my weakness, bro. Hey, hey, yeah. if, if one day he comes in, it's a conspiracy. The next day he comes in, it's bullshit. Oh my God, we're all gonna die. It's like dude. don't see anybody. We've got like, a, a cure for all these things. Look, guys. Yeah, yeah, then the next day, oh my God, there's the apocalypse. Bro, I can't, it's I, because I'm always in my head. Right? I can't keep up with you. In fact, Sal and uh, I mean Doug. Doug and Justin and I, we, we created our own thread that doesn't even oh, include really? Sal anymore. Yeah. We're just like, listen, when, like, are we <laughs> <laughs> mind pump without Sal thread. Yeah, 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 How are we going to yeah. deal with this? Yeah, Dude, yeah, it's yeah. it's because I'm in my Somebody head. Get, I'm already in my head. Somebody I, give him a value. I think a lot. And then on top of it, you know, I don't like, like I, I you know, I'm about a little bit of a hypochondriac anyway. So it's like the worst situation, but I'll sit in there paranoid as shit watching TV with Jessica. Jessica looks at me. She's like, what's wrong? Yeah. I'm like, I'm really paranoid right now she's like oh fuck i knew, I knew that so, was a bad idea so i know you being the paranoid guy i know you have to be doing a lot of different woo woo shit so give me the give Ooh. me the, give me the list of things that you're doing right now that's woo woo you know so to try and you know be a, are you still grounding no, no <laughs> grounding so, bro yeah no no so here's the thing okay i'm i might be i might get myself to the point where i'm anxious and paranoid but i'm not doing stupid shit that I, i'm tr what i try to do is stick to the data because if I allow my emotions to run free, then you're right. It's going to get weird. So, you know, I'll be doing coffee enemas and weird shit, you know, before you know it. <laughs> so I'm just sticking to Film it. All I'm doing, I'm sticking to the stuff that I know is legit. So, you know, I'm exercising. I'm doing my meditation prayer. That's really good for stress. I'm going for daily walks. I'm making sure I get really good sleep. Trying to eat healthy, although that's much more difficult now. I actually bought this. I haven't bought a full bag of potato chips mm. in a long time, and I bought two the other day. Yeah. I had two big ass bags These of legs. These things are sneaking their way back in. Man. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. I ate a whole bag the other day went up to my dome by myself. Not doing any woo woo stuff. No, at all. well, no. So, so here's what I'm doing. Here's my routine, I right? Say, I don't believe you. No, yeah. no, no. Here's my routine. So I'm doing uh, working out, uh, you know, daily activity, daily walks, getting sunshine, getting good sleep. I'm supplementing with uh, vitamin D with zinc. Um, and then I've been more consistent than I've ever been with the, uh, with the, the red light therapy, the mm -hmm, juve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why that? Uh, because that actually does boost the immune system. So that's got actual studies that support how it boosts uh, your body's ability to fight in infections. Is that just because of how fast it's re replenishing the the cells? Like, what is it? What is it doing to help uh, boost the immune it system? In it improves your cells' ability to utilize the primary source of, of energy in your whole body, which is ATP. So, when your mitochondria use ATP faster and better, then all of your body's functions improve. So, this mm -hmm. is the main reason why they think it helps regrow hair, why it's good for skin, like wrinkles and collagen, why it's good for, you know, uh, inflammation. Physical therapists have been using red light therapy forever. It's it, it basically, if your body is utilizing energy more efficiently and effectively, it's going to improve all of its functions and immune system. There are studies to show that it helps with that as well. No so, shit. You know, yeah. it's crazy you bring that up because I'm, I've been terrible at that again. You know, uh, one, mm -hmm. we were up at Tahoe, so I didn't have the light with me. Uh -huh. And 
dude, if my psoriasis ain't the worst it's been in a long time, and it's again, whenever I get and that's dry a, air up there didn't help. I'm ex- sure. I think that yeah. exaggerated. I think that's why it's so bad right now. But the combination of I, I fell off my consistency with using the light, and then in addition to that, being up in that dry air up there just makes it way. And then also diet too, because if my yeah. diet's off a little bit, so the combination of that I'm like going through like the worst psoriasis spell that I've ever been through. So you telling me that now is going to make me kick back well, up my routine. Talking a little bit about like some of the food. That that's sneaking its way back in, like the the chips and like like ice cream things like that. So I get this message, and and I've been dropping like some pretty random facts lately on on the podcast. And uh, somebody sent me this one that was like another animal fact that I was just like, oh my god, I did not know this, and I'm completely disgusted by it. Right? So you know the flavors, vanilla, raspberry. Uh, I forget what the other one is, but I think strawberry, <laughs> but for, for ice cream or for sodas, things like that. Uh, do you know, like what is part of that process? Like, isn't there, what, what animal? Isn't there an extract from the anus of the beaver? Yes. Yes. I what? Knew yes. You knew this? Yeah, I yeah. did. Huh? Of course you knew this. I did. Yeah. It's, it's, it's anal. Like, uh, you know how like even dogs have like an anal gland like this for like marking and yeah. stuff. So beavers have this, but apparently it smells really good. Like, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was one like scientist, like she was like talking to this reporter about it and like putting the beaver's ass, like right in her face. And like, like people think I'm crazy for this, but it smells so good. Uh, what's it called, Doug? What is that called? It's uh Oh, cast, uh, castorium. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. got a musky vanilla scent. So here's the now, deal. Now, is that what I'm going to see on labels? No, they're not going to put... Yeah, they'll say yeah, they'll put castorium. Say it has, That's what I mean. Or... It has beaver goo in it. No, of course they're not going to say... Butt goo. Yeah, beef, oh, yeah, yeah, beaver butt. Beaver butt goo. Or what they'll say is natural flavors or natural... Oh, <laughs> that is very natural. Yes, so... It doesn't get more natural than that. So when they put natural... When they say in a product, you know, because we want to avoid chemicals, right? So everybody's like, I want, it, I want something natural. I don't want chemicals. So instead of having like chemical vanilla smell, they'll say natural... You know, fragrances, mm-hmm. you know that it's beaver butt. So yeah, is yeah. this... Is, Shaved beaver butt. Now, is this the most popular or widely used natural source of vanilla flavor? It's very common. It's very common. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. They're, and, and, yeah. Is there like a farm somewhere where they're like just squeezing these little guys? Look at this. <laughs> you know, like I'm just like, this is crazy. Well, here's what it says. Beaver's gland secretion. Oh, raspberry was the other flavor. Can be found in alcoholic beverages, baked goods, frozen dairy chewing products, gum. chewing yeah. gum, sweets, meat products, pudding, gelatin, ice cream, vanilla flavoring, and raspberry flavored food. We're all eating uh, beaver ass. Mm. We didn't even know it. That's I had crazy. no idea. Had no well, idea. Hey, this is good to know if you're in nature, you know what I mean? And you're eating, you're like eating raw meat. You're like, oh, gosh, it's, I <laughs> wish I could flavor it up. It. Yeah. You know? Catch a beaver and rub it all over oh, my yeah. steak. Yeah. 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 Mm, that before, sounds really bad. Before, I'm try it. It's to catch a beaver and rub it all over my <laughs> before steak. Before you grill the beaver <laughs> to eat the beaver, make sure you get the- It's a t-shirt waiting to be made. The uh, what, yeah. uh, beaver butt smell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Beaver butt just sounds like you're going, anyway. Speaking of food, you guys see that in and out closed down. Uh, any? Do you guys know why? You have any idea why? <clears throat> Probably just to main to safety for their employees. I well, don't I don't know. They were uh, most most uh, fast food chains still are doing drive through and allowing that. Uh-huh. And I just someone shared an article with me. I haven't had a chance to actually go through it. I thought maybe one of you guys might have known uh, why why they shut down. Doug, maybe you could pull up why. Uh, but I thought that was interesting. What a travesty. Yeah, because <laughs> that is no. I know. I like, it's like the, one of my favorite. There's fast a lot food. of yeah. There's a lot of restaurants out there. I mean, this is the only way they're sort of like surviving right now is the the takeout. They must have a lot of cash uh, in order to do this. But you know, because because yeah. In and Out is private, right? They're a private company. They're not a shareholder public company. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Yeah. Actually, I know it because they have uh, like Bible verses at the bottom of their. They're like a Christian-owned company, oh, right? right? Like and, yeah, yeah, like Chick Fil A. Yeah, you would never see that in a public company. Um, and they must be worried about. I mean, I'm speculating. I don't know. The, I don't know what's going on, but I wonder if they're just you know trying to protect their employees if they want to you know give them. Who knows? Or are they laying them off? Are they going to cut all their pay? Well, that's what I'm. I'm wondering what's going to happen with all that. Well, did you guys see the the, uh, the what not riot the strike at the um, Amazon uh, at some of these Amazon? Uh, what aren't they hiring delivery? a bunch of people? Why would they strike? So it's know. not a, it's not it's not company wide, but there was one or two of these these like delivery locations. What what do they call them? Where they they they, they have the products and then they ship house. Yeah, something like that, right? They went on strike because. They're saying that they're not being kept safe because the policy is um, if you don't have any symptoms uh, or no, if you have symptoms, if you're sick, you can still come to work unless you're tested positive for COVID. 
And so the employees are like, that's not cool or whatever. And so a lot of them went on strike because they said, that's not, we want to make sure if people have symptoms that they can stay home and get paid. Hmm. Wow. Ra- ra- rather than just having to have a positive. Now, what's, now what's your thought, uh, Sal, on, uh, you know, I know you, you love uh, reading economics and, you know, I have to wonder you know, we we just infused two trillion dollars. We're mm-hmm. we're now starting to do all these the the business uh, bailouts where you can uh, apply for a, a loan that will be forgiven. We got a letter from our lawyer on this. What do you think is going to to happen? Like I I just I feel like free money is just too good to be true. Yep, yep. I think there's going to be a lot of businesses that take advantage because what they did with this with this trillion two trillion dollar stimulus or whatever. Is that they they pushed it through as fast as possible, right? Yeah. So there aren't lots of descriptions on the. Uh, there there's not lot there's not lots of stipulations so far. It's kind of uh, gray area or general with how they're saying, you know, if you use this money to pay your employees, then we'll forgive it. Well, what if a company has lots of profits and then they get this this money and then they pay their employees with it, do they still get forgiven? Mm-hmm. What I think is going to happen is I think you're going to have a lot of people take advantage of this because it's not, there aren't clear lines in it. And then later on, I feel like the politicians are going to come back when we start to suffer the ramifications. Oh, yeah. And then they're going to start to say, we're going to audit you now and we're going to go after these companies. Be careful. Don't, totally. don't pick up the soap, huh? I felt like it was so good. So, yeah, so, so accurate. Uh, That's how I, I agree with you. Like yeah, I, yeah. we don't, I, I don't know if it's going to be so much like they're going to be coming back to collect some of this money. There's no way because we're going to suffer massive repercussions. Yeah. And when we do, they're going to blame the companies. They're going to say all these companies took this free money and did look. I told you guys what. Last I'm still week. appalled. Yeah, by what you brought up last time about the airlines and like how these new airline companies are popping Dude, up just to get part of the bailout. As of like a week or two ago, there were tw- as, of, as as soon as the news came out that this these these stimulus was coming out, 25 airline companies got started and 50 cruise line companies. <laughs> Got started. Such horseshit. Well, I mean, here I you mean, are. I understand the, uh, the the hustle, but yeah, it's definitely a hustle. That's part of the game. Well, and the, so- sh- the shitty part that I I think I, that about all this is that if if you're correct, uh, it's going to be really unfortunate if it's like the small business owner that gets fucked over on this, and it's those uh, the the millionaire who's got all the loopholes, the lawyer, the, le- the ability to fight it and to I mean, win. Usually, that's that's who wins. Well, right? I feel like the big companies that take advantage of this, they are in cahoots with their lobbyists, you know, the lobbyists and the politicians. Yeah. You're probably right; they're not going to get screwed. Um, and also, if you're a company that employs fifty thousand employees. You know, publicly speaking, it's going to be hard for politicians to come after you because then you're like, I got to lay off all these people and it'll be a bad. But the smaller companies, especially the the newer ones, I think that's who they're going to go after. Nobody's going to hear about them, mm-hmm. and I think those are the ones that are that are going to take advantage, but not have the the connections. You know, yeah. they're the ones that are going to read and be like, oh, cool, free money. You know, let's do. You know what I think is going to be really funny? <laughs> that I, I I just started realizing this uh, yesterday because. You know, my kids are now that, you know, I've been, my self quarantine is over, whatever. My kids, I can see my kids. And I was looking at my son and his hair, you know, he's a 14 year old boy. So his hair grows like, like Medusa. Like it's crazy. Like my, <laughs> him and I will get a haircut the same day. Yeah. And you get the hedge trimmers out. His hair is just grows hella fast. So he's already starting to get a mop head, yeah. but you can't get a haircut anywhere. Yeah. I can't wait to see. Oh, I have a story for this. Too. Yeah, so we everybody's hair. We've been trying to like figure this out too, because my kids have like their hair's getting getting crazy right now. And Courtney, uh, her her best friend is like a, a stylist and, and works at a salon and everything. So she's not working right now. So she pitched it to her like, hey, you know, can can you Zoom or Skype virtually or whatever, help me. virtually help me as I'm cutting there? And I'm like. Oh my God! Are you seriously doing this? And she's gonna do it. Oh wow! I'll have to report back and see how this goes. Dude, we're Bro, that's s- actually really interesting. Isn't it a, it's a good idea. I was like, I was actually yeah, proud kids. of her for coming out. Yeah. You know, but it's like whatever. I already saw some trainers pivot that I thought were really smart. They uh, have been get, so okay. A lot of companies, uh, like some of my client friends and stuff, that have like, you know, they they're still working remotely. Most of their job was remote anyways. Now they're just doing everything through Zoom. They have their meetings. They've got 100 plus employees or whatever. And then, you know, a lot of times these meetings have got 25, 50 people. Well, they are they are actually taking those at-home employees. Some of these companies are doing this, which I think is awesome, that companies that are still thriving or doing okay during this time are paying for the services of some of these trainers. So those of you that are trainers that are listening right now, here's a great uh, pitch or people to go after 
are these companies that are still operating fine, still have all their employees, but now all working from home, is Skyping uh, a, a group workout for the entire t- uh, staff. Oh, yeah. Mm. So you've got <clears throat> 20, 30 employees that are on Zoom that are following the trainer, doing the exercises and working out. And because you're going after a company and it's only an hour of your time, you could probably charge a higher rate for your hour of time that you're servicing 20 or 30 people at one time for companies. So going after companies Dude. and charging, charging, because think about Virtual this. Virtual co- corporate wellness. Yeah. I think if, you're, if, you, if you have a company, just so say you have to say. 30 or 40 employees. And a trainer charges you two hundred dollars an hour, but for two hundred bucks, I get to have all my all my uh, employees active and yeah. working out in the morning before yeah. they start work. I like that. What a great service! I like that. It also brings <laughs> unity among the staff. Yeah, everybody has to get together yeah. on there. I yeah, like, that's I like a good that. idea. I, I, you know, I just I'm I'm telling you, it's going to be hilarious when this whole thing is over in a month or two, however long. <laughs> We're going to be walking around, and you're going to see a lot of real hair color. You're going to be walking. <laughs> you're going to see a lot of women with gray hair. Yeah, oh, did, you, gray did hair, you see that like meme going around about, coming uh, out. about uh, in, in three months, uh, 80% of the blondes will be gone? Yeah, probably, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's going to be – I mean, I, where am I going to get back? You know what might be selling a shit ton right now? Actually, I just thought about this. Remember the Floby? Floby? <laughs> you guys remember the Floby? Oh, what was, is that? Was that the one with like the? Uh, it, it was like a vacuum that like cut hair. Yeah, dude. It, it was. was a, this was a TV product back in the I want to say the early nineties, <clears throat> and it was like a hair trimmer that you it was like but you attached, attached it to, to your, vacuum. your vacuum. Yeah. So, so you and it basically all you could do is cut your hair like one length, you know. Yeah. But you. So military bases oh. used that back in the days. Do they really? Yeah. When I was a kid, I don't know why where I was at and how why I'd be at a military base. <laughs> Look at that. It's the Floby. Yes. Yes. I've actually had my hair cut by one of those. <laughs> you, wait, you cut your hair with a floby? I didn't. Did I had. I was. I got my hair cut. Didn't maybe, turn out well. Is yeah. it the I got my. Hair, I hairs? got my hair cut at a military base, and I and I can't even remember if I was with an uncle or who I was with. And they had all the all the barbers had one of these attached oh to the clippers, and it just it, you know wild. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm about. To, I'm about to bring buy it, one. You have to watch the infomercial for this if you're listening. Oh, it's, it's the best it's thing. Amazing. It's the best thing you've ever seen in your life. I'm yeah. about to buy one so I can cut my, my, my son's hair. So, so I get over here and I'm going to flow be your so head. So it's funny that you bring uh, up the flow because I, if I show this to Katrina, she's going to die. You know, we did that uh, that questionnaire thing with the you did oh the spouse's questionnaire and oh you cheated and the bro, and the and, you and the, cheated and the pet pe- I did not yeah you did bro I would not that is so lame okay. he was hovering was so bad Look, hovering right let me tell the audience hey don't time. be mad because my girl loves me bro <laughs> no. you know what I'm saying shut up yeah, she supports you and all that dude fuck you she just knows yeah, yeah he's like yeah, he's like he's like these are way too good she just knows yeah. your she just knows your how, you, what you want to hear See, this we've is been together for ten years bro here's the questions it'd be like. What do I do the most that annoys you? And then your spouse is supposed to answer the question. Right. So Adams would be like, you know, like yeah. I clean the house a lot. Or some it shit was like not, that. Like, bro. About, bro. If you're gonna share it, share it right. What's my you know, your what? flaws? You work way too hard. Yeah, that what? was one. You're too focused. You're too on top yeah. of things. What's my worst quality? Yeah. You know, I'm so honest. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> They were not that bad. Oh my God, dude. dude. They were yeah, not seriously. that bad. What do I hate most about yeah. you? You spend too much time oral sexing me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite, we- dude, this is my best quality. She couldn't come up with anything other than I can accessorize my hats to my outfits really well. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? That's good. Bro, how long, that, how long you been married again? Yeah, dude. 11 years. That's when the honesty comes out. Yeah. That's it's when like, the come honesty on, starts man. to come did, out. Now, did you fill out one for Jessica? Did you do hers? I didn't do... I, I, Yes, I did. I did one for her and she did one for me. And she's like... You know, one of the ones was like, what's a phrase that I always say? And she's like, I told you so. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you so. Yeah, that is a, you so. that is something. Yeah, I that was one you make it fun of me. Katrina threw back my quotes. I say the same. I have yeah. there's a handful of quotes I use she, all the time. She so said she, I say all intents and purposes all the time. I don't ever say that. Do you really? Yeah. Do, you do I that. say that? You it's do. like maybe once or twice. You say that. No, you know, I wouldn't know if I would, you'd say that. For all right. intents and purposes, do I say that? <laughs> like shoot me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was supposed to be like a fun game that Sal put out and yeah, ended up I'm like causing more. Everyone's everyone's getting in fights with it. Like really, you can't think of a single good quality about me. Oh, dude. Oh, I was hyping her up like crazy. I, I, I turned the table. How are you guys all getting along now? You've been, you, you're stuck at home with your with your girls as long. Because I'm finding, you know, I'm, I'm seeing all these memes about couples like getting at each other's, you know, on each other's yeah. nerves. And parents having to homeschool their kids and how they want to, you know. I would think, I, I would think Justin them. has the most stress. I would think yeah. you have, because you've got two kids at home, you're trying to homeschool and, and, and wife and is home. a new puppy. Uh, yeah. I, I think and that was the thing. And we, like, I knew immediately if we had, you know, one more thing 
in the house, like it was going to get a little bit more on the chaotic side. It was going to tip into that, Mm -hmm. you know, side of the scale. And, but no, we've been doing okay. Like it, again, like I, I kind of mentioned another podcast about how we've been trying to attack this by like really kind of like ironing out a good schedule for everybody. So it was consistent, but yeah, dude, I get home and, and it's like, ah, like yelling and madness and chaos. I'm okay. I'm right outside, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it just takes a couple, you know, stern, uh, like talkings to, to the kids and stuff. <laughs> and then we get everybody like, right. You know, now, but how, how, how are you and wifey though? Have you got, are you guys, do you feel like you guys are fighting more often right now because you're, uh, we're confined like this? Are you normal? What is it like? Yeah, right I now? think, uh, I think both. I think, <laughs> but I think she's doing a lot of like self-work right now, which is amazing. It's been great. Uh, her going through this kind of journey and stuff and like really trying to kind of like figure out like, you know, her, where she fits, what her purpose, all this kind of stuff, like things I've been trying to talk about for a long time. And so, but that's also bringing up other things. Things, which then get kind of ping pong back and then we kind of discuss like well i don't know you know like uh, was that really me or was that you or yeah <laughs> so it creates conversations that get a little heated but then it, it honestly it's been for the best and so it's actually pretty chill right now yeah so. it's it's when they start you know when you hear this real quick you know come home like hey honey and she's like you know i've been doing a lot of thinking today like oh <laughs> how's this gonna good. affect me yeah, yeah. no uh, right now you know because jessica's still in her first trimester poor girl man she's going it. Oh yeah, I forgot you 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 could probably deal with a little bit of emotions and stuff going up and down right yeah, now too. Dude. Well, first off, her food aversions are terrible. Uh. If I say the wrong food, I could say steak. She hates steak right now, meat. Like any kind of meat makes her want to throw it. Which like, is crazy because no. she normally loves meat. Loves it. Yeah. So if I just say the word steak in in she's she has to leave the room. If there's, wow. it, it, it smells powerful. Can, the other day, uh, I had peanut. You know, I, we made homemade cookies or whatever, and I put a little peanut butter on one or whatever. And I guess I had the peanut butter smell on me. She couldn't sleep all night. She had to go in the other room. For, I washed my hand. Doesn't matter. Wow. She could smell it's like supersonic yeah. senses, dude. It's yeah. so bad. She's had this so terrible. She's been such a trooper though. And then she goes through these phases where right now what's happened is her energy. Up until two or three p.m. is good. Yeah. Mm. As soon as three p.m. hits, she, fucked. She wow. feels like shit. She gets super nauseous and she and she's tired. So she what she tries to do is like front load the day with like everything she needs to do. Yeah. And then the rest of the day, yeah. it's like she's. she's what, what's she drunk. eating the most of right now? She, you know, what's funny. She, it's it's <clears throat> she has such a small category of foods that she can eat. So one thing that we found is that dairy is a good source uh, for her of protein. Mm. So she's eating more dairy because meat is, she's averse to tuna fish. She can eat. So that's not a problem. So she can eat that Um, rice cake, things that are bland seem to be a a lot easier for vegetables. Big no, no. She, she hates vegetable. They make her want to throw up. So we're trying to find ways to kind of squeeze her salads. She can do. So that's how she's doing her, her vegetables. So it's weird. Yeah, how much you change when you're it's almost like the opposite of what she's been eating, dude. And yeah. I mean, I'm sitting over here like I feel the same, obviously. So I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm watching her. I'm like, thanks, honey. You know what I mean? Thanks for uh, you're walking around on eggshells. Well, it's tough because like, you can't just like leave the house for the day or some shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> I try to do you know help as much as possible, but something get you, those breath mints, dude. Some things you can't help. Like you know, she feel like, what am I gonna do? I can't help you, so I'm yeah. just gonna fucking sit there and hear you throw up in the bathroom. I can't really do anything. You know what I mean? It's terrible. Uh, it's really, really bad. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Dude, uh, Italy's curve. Have you guys heard the news about their-, their Yeah, what's the latest? Rumor no, is it's slowing, right? It's flattening. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So it looks like they hit their peak and now it's flattening out. Thank God. Yeah. You know, yeah, dude. they were in such a bad you know place, but it looks like the, the quarantine is paying off and the cases are starting to flatten out. So hopefully we'll see the cases start to drop. Um, and you know, some of the people can go back to, you know, normal life or whatever. Well, yeah. on that note too, we just, uh, California just announced, uh, kids are staying out of school till next year, right? That's it. It's a public schools. Yeah. It's official now, yep, right? Done. Oh, it's, it's only public Great. School. Well, um, the private schools yeah. are going to follow yeah. suit. Yeah. Right? Cause private schools were the first to close, close doors. They so were. Of course they'll stay. Yeah. Right? They're going to stay. And then our, uh, what do they call it? Shelter in place got extended to May 3rd, thir- May 3rd, I think. So May 3rd is our extension. Now, how does something like this happen for someone like you who pays for private school, Sal? And you're, if your kids aren't going to school, are you still paying? I mean, how I am. That? They're still getting schooling. Oh, okay. So it's still... Yeah. So actually, they're very organized. I'm really impressed because I've, I've talked to my, my other friends who have kids that go to other schools or public mm-hmm. schools, and they've had a little bit more difficulty 
But like my son's school, he logs in. He's in his classroom live mm -hmm. with the other students. Oh, shit. Like that? He's yeah. on a schedule. That's what my kids have, too. It, 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 oh, it, I didn't know they were doing that. Yeah, they were doing that. Like it, They started to do that Zoom class with everybody. And, uh, it, when did they start that? It wasn't in Tahoe. No, it wasn't. It was right after we got home. Oh, so. okay. But yeah, it's but the workload is overwhelming, dude. Like the, It's not only is it like the however many hours, like five, six hours of what they normally would have worked in school but then they're still given like the homework on top of that yeah. i'm like how dare you i feel yeah. like the we are home i feel like this is the teachers like going ha, don't pay us 100 yeah. percent. they're <laughs> yeah, just yeah. oh yeah then yeah. you're gonna want to get this done by tomorrow well think about it this way let's say that let's let, if the teachers are still getting paid which they are and they still have to teach their classrooms they're not in front of the kids teaching them all day so all, all they're doing is that they're at home thinking of shit for the kids to do so they're like you gotta do this that's exactly that. what it is this. Yeah, so they're throwing together. And and that's the thing is like no other schools in the county are like anywhere close to the amount of work that they're like pushing on the kids while they're at home like this. It's like uh, I was like talking to Courtney about this. You got to push back a little bit. Like this is like this is too much, you know? Yeah, well, my, my the way that the grading changed for my son's school is interesting. He says now because tests, they're not really giving tests. Um, like they did before, obviously. How are they going to give you a test when you're at home? Right, and cheat. Right, so they place a heavier uh, or a larger percentage of the grade now is on on, part on participation. Oh, okay. So when he's in the class, if he comments or says something, that'll count. Oh, wow. But here's the problem. Before, tests were so heavily weighted that if he had a B, he could get a really good score on a couple tests and get it up to an A. Hmm. But now, the way that it's structured, he's like, I'm screwed. He goes, I can't move. I can't get my Bs up to A's, no matter how well I do, because the, there's, the tests are not weighted heavily. So it's like everybody, the people at the bottom are going to be having an easier time coming up, and the people at the top are probably going to sit a little bit lower now. Now, we've been taught, we talked on this show uh, years ago, um, and it's been a while since we brought this up, but we've predicted for a long time that the education system is going to be one of the next big systems to be disrupted. Yep. Do you think this could be one of the catalysts that causes I, that? Honestly, I, I, I really so. do think, especially in the, the college realm, like it, people are going to realize they can just do everything online. Why, why go up, you know, why spend all this money and go to campus to actually accomplish these things when you can literally do it, you know, the convenience of your house and, yeah. and keep do, keep working. Yeah. But there's also a lot of parents that are like, I can't wait to get my kids. Yeah. Back to you you got to think there's, there's always going to be that. There is going to be that. But I like what you just said, Justin, that's what I kind of think. Like I didn't realize that these, the teachers were already starting to host like zoom classrooms mm -hmm. like that. Like well, even people that are like have graduated, have like long time ago, they were in school. Like our, like I'm finding myself interested in classes from like UCLA or things they're offering, where it's like I could just sign up for this semester class and then you know do it all virtually and and, and get an education on something I'm really interested in. Only it's right. a, it is interesting. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be interesting to hear how our kids talk about this time when they're older. Like, how are the kids going to remember? Because I can, I can tell you right now, my kids are, are going to remember this as a fun time. Yeah. yeah oh, if, I remember when I got to stay at home and we all hung out and then I did schoolwork. I mean, home. if it stays as a short blip of a couple months, it won't, it won't be much on their memory. But if it ends up, if this bleeds into next year and we feel the repercussions of it, then yeah, it'll, yeah. They'll, they'll for sure remember. I feel it. bad for the graduating. Uh, like That's seniors. what my, so my, my best friend who's the principal. Like I didn't even that didn't even cross my mind, and he's yeah. Like, they have no dance. He's they like, dude, no my heart breaks for uh, you know all of my seniors. Yeah, mm -hmm. that are like you just you you just graduate like yep. no yeah. walk, no no right. no. no I you know. think about that, you're right? Gonna, you're gonna you're gonna go up to the printer to get your diploma. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah, that I did it with a selfie. And yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, shit, my my senior year in high school was like one of oh, my favorite years. It was yeah. fun, man. It was, it was a blast. It was a, it was you know you're on you know you're on your last year there. If you had already, I had got most of my units already done, oh, so yeah. I was taking half a load. Yeah, like, like three classes. In, yeah, in like auto senior shop. Year, senior yeah. year was a blast, man. And the, and all the all the things towards the end of the year that you get to do, like man, that's a that's a bummer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. First question is from Kylie Schranzi. You have mentioned that the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism can be. Can you please explain this a little bit further? Yes, <sighs> yes. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. No, go this. for it. And the reason why I want to start because uh, this one, um, I've, I've got into it with people online uh, many times over the way I, I explain this because, and this is a, uh, another one of those examples where I talk about how it, it annoys me when. Um, fitness professionals and uh, academia do this where we we get into arguing over semantics on who's more right about the science. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, because uh, I, one of the best ways to explain this to uh, the average client so they understand and get the concept is to kind of break down like how many calories more does muscle burn per day versus fat. And that I used to use, and there's all kinds, and where the debate comes from is there's all kinds of research and study to show how drastically different that is for person to person, which that's where it can get really muddy and confusing when trying to explain to the average person. But the way I would explain it to somebody is this, for every extra pound of muscle that you have on your body, so for every pound of muscle we build on your body, your body burns an additional 30 to 50 calories a day. Now, the, where, that's where the argument is. Oh, that's too high. Oh, that's not high enough. Like, oh, that's not. We've studies show that it's way less than that. Here's the deal. The, the, the idea is to get the point across so people understand, not get hung up on the exact percentage, the exact calorie amount. The idea is for you to understand as a, as a, a client that if I can get you to add five pounds of muscle on your body, then I potentially have got your metabolism burning an additional two to 300 extra calories every single day without doing any extra activity. It's because muscle is an expensive tissue. It requires more calories to sustain, to stay on your body more than fat does. You add fat, it doesn't take a lot of calories to keep fat on your body. It does take more calories to keep muscle. So as we build more muscle, it's more expensive. It needs more calories to stay. That's how it speeds up the metabolism. And the number is what's debatable. But it did to me, I used to just give that 40 to 60 calories extra per pound to put it into perspective for a client that, hey, listen, we can keep your scale the same. And I could actually add five pounds of muscle to your body and lose body fat. And you would stay the same on the scale, but because you've added five pounds of muscle, your body is now burning an additional X calories per day. Right. So, it, and it, it, it gets even more interesting than that because mm. there's the obvious: you have more active tissue. Mm -hmm. That active tissue requires more calories just to maintain. Fat is, uh, you know, fat is still an active tissue, but it's far less active um, than muscle, so it requires less calories to maintain. One of the most expensive tissues on the body is the brain. Um, it utilizes quite a bit of calories for the amount, you know, the size it is, and your organs as well. Um, but muscle is a, is, a, is a relatively expensive tissue, so that's the simple way of explaining it. And it's if look, bottom line is more muscle means you'll burn more calories. That's the bottom line. Yeah. But there's more to it. It also goes this far that there's a bit of metabolic flexibility within the amount of lean mass that you have on your body. So what I mean by that is you could have. 150 pounds of lean mass on your body and your body could run off of 2,000 calories or 2,800 calories with the same amount of lean body mass. Now, how does that happen? Well, there's the body can make itself without necessarily changing the amount of lean tissue and whatnot. The, it can change the efficiency of how you utilize calories. Now, one of the, way, one of the ways to speed up the metabolism is to reduce that efficiency. And one of the best ways to do that is to send a signal to the body that says, I have ample calories coming in and I need to get stronger. So increasing your calories, by the way, just bumping your calories a little bit will actually speed up your metabolism a little bit. Regardless, I don't care who you are, you eat a little bit more, your body burns a little bit more. Now, how much more it burns depends on the individual, depends on the other signals that you're sending your body, but ample calories sends a signal that says, we don't need to be as efficient. Then the other signal is, Am I sending a signal to my body that says I need to get stronger mm -hmm. and build muscle? Even if I kept my lean body mass the same, if I start lifting weights and tell my body I need to get stronger and I need more muscle, just that signal alone reduces efficiency or the, the, the thriftiness that your body has with calories. And we've seen this with the people that we've trained. I've had clients I've worked with who have only gained a couple pounds of muscle, but the calories that they burn more doesn't make any sense. You gain two pounds of muscle, you're burning 800 more calories. I know two pounds of muscle just sitting there isn't burning 400 calories yeah, it's the more. the environment per you create. That's it. That's it. It's not burning 400 more calories per pound. So there's 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 other things that happen there that we don't quite understand, but I've observed it time and time again. I know other coaches, coaches that work with competitive uh, you know, physique competitors, bodybuilders, and bikini competitors, like Lane Norton. He talks about this all the time. We don't exactly know what's going on, but we've observed it. And you make your metabolism faster by both building muscle and by sending the signals to your body that say, we don't need to be thrifty. You do those two things and you do them consistently and you do it the right way and appropriately, 
and you'll see a pretty steep ramp up of the calories. I've been blown away many times by it. Well, yeah, and just behaviorally, like seeing, uh, you know, if your if your body if you're focused more on building muscle and, and you know going in that direction, just what kind of activity that promotes overall in you know comparison to you know your lean body mass, like and and you're you're optimizing your your fat storage, like so yeah, just just the behavior of 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 you know acquiring more muscle is going to create uh, more calorie burn. Well, yeah, it's the, it's the two major factors. Factor one, to have more to have more muscle in your body requires more energy to keep it there. So it, it needs more calories than fat does. Mm-hmm. So that's factor one. And then factor two, if you're telling the body by lifting weights to build more muscle, it needs more calories to build the muscle. It doesn't build it out of thin air. Yeah. So it needs calories there also. So it's not just having more muscle speeds up the metabolism. It's also the act of trying to build muscle is also requiring more calories. The combination of those two factors is what results in what I've observed in my time, roughly somewhere between 30 to 50 calories per pound of lean body mass or pound of muscle that you add to your body, give or take, because there is a variance per person. But it's a really good number to give people a kind of an idea of like, wow, if I really make an effort to build muscle and I could just put on five or six pounds of muscle and focus that way, I potentially could speed my metabolism that much. That's a significant difference. It is. And look, uh, you know, a while ago, uh, one of the for actually the first time we interviewed uh, what I consider to be one of the smartest professional bodybuilders in the world, uh, uh, Ben Pikulski, you know, up until that point, up until we met him, I thought that one of the the genetic deciding factors, one of the factors that determined whether or not uh, somebody could become a pro bodybuilder, besides the fact that they could build lots of muscle and they respond well to exercise and that they, you know, that their body responded well to drugs, one of the factors that I thought was they probably had incredible digestion to be able to consume all the calories that it, that their body needed to build so much muscle. I mean, some of these guys are are coming in shredded. 270 pounds. That's what I thought. So when I interviewed Ben and I told him this, he said, it's the opposite. He said, pro bodybuilders are able to eat less and build tons of muscle. They actually can walk around with tons and tons of muscle in their body and not have this huge metabolism spike. It's one of the reasons why they can carry so much muscle. Imagine if you were you know, 250 pounds, you'd have to consume 10 or 12,000 calories every day. That's going to kill you. And yet some of these guys are walking around 5,000 calories, 4,000 calories able to maintain it. So there's a bit of a genetic component uh, you know, that's influenced there as well. But if you want to speed up your metabolism, build muscle and then send the signals that tell your body you don't need to be thrifty with calories. That's going to speed up your metabolism. How much it speeds up, that can be determined on your genetics and, and some of your past, but that's how you speed it up. That's the most effective way I've seen. Next question is from Illa Ganke. Uh, how can you spot a good at-home workout plan versus a poorly planned one? Almost everything I've seen online has me doing burpees until my <laughs> knees give out. That's a great. This is a good question. Okay, so it, here's a bad. Here's some characteristics of a bad at-home workout plan. Uh, it's not phased. It is a hundred percent completely circuit-based. So it's just a bunch of exercises thrown together. It includes lots of jumping and bounding. Jumping, bounding, uh, jumping side to side, jumping over a chair, those, you know, explosive movements like that, you'll see that in our programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has its place, uh, but, you know, you, you have, have to, to be advanced. Maintain, yeah, uh, you have to be advanced and you have to do the work, like uh, leaning into that. And then also, like, uh, you know, make sure you, you focus on the intent of, uh, you know, what you're trying to get out of it. Yes, um, they don't incorporate rest periods properly. So it's just it's just cardio, you know, just cardio with your body. You're not really doing any resistance training. Um, they don't have a stability <clears throat> or excuse me or tension uh, component. You know, uh, isometrics applied properly require no equipment and are extremely <clears throat> effective and valuable when you combine them with body weight exercise. If you have an at home workout program that it doesn't incorporate any isometrics or stability movements with your body weight movements, then you know it was written by somebody that doesn't understand how to make uh, an equipment free or minimal equipment uh, program effective. Well, this is what inspired Maps Anywhere. Like every program that we done years ago, we we talked uh, you know a lot of Mind Pump early on before we had all the programs was us pointing out all different modalities and things that we saw in the space, and probably one of the most 
abused uh, workouts is at home workouts. Um, They're the and, worst programmed. Yeah, I mean, and to take a, a shot right at some uh, a big company, you're talking about a, a multi billion dollar company, Beachbody, which is primarily uh, at home workouts, and it's solely based off of intensity and look. It's all entertainment. Yeah, it's all entertainment. It's geared towards marketing to uh, demographics of people that will identify with the person who's leading the class, and then it's just intensity based, and it's just a bunch of random exercises that are put together with no sort of rhyme or reason that are designed to kick your ass or make you sweat. And that's not effective programming. I don't give a shit if you're in home or in the gym, that's poor programming. And so us addressing that, talking about that, of course, our response to that is, okay, if we were going to write an at-home program that is scaled up correctly and then also has the flexibility for the level of fitness, because that's so important. When you're talking about at-home workout, you get a very wide range of people that are taking that. Everything from a brand new beginner, you know, to a 60-year-old lady who's never worked out before, to somebody who's advanced in traveling because they're on the go and they're a businesswoman or man and they just need to get a workout inside their hotel room. So we had to take that all into consideration. Like, how do we build a program that's scalable for all levels of fitness, but then is also programmed knowing that, hey, there could be somebody too who's coming into this as very beginning or at 60 years old. How do they have it effective? That was what... And there's a lot of variables that you just don't see people use with... Uh, and you mentioned isometrics. And I think that that was one that really caught my attention a long time ago just because it was so underutilized and it was so effective. And uh, you know, the, and the strength gains are, are beyond just the angle that you're actually uh, applying these. It actually cascades in a little bit further. Uh, and you get stronger in, in, in you know, even further range of motion. And so there's just lots of benefit to it. And also it's very safe. So you can ramp up and really get an intense workout uh, and get that same kind of a feel with your central nervous system, but less damage. And so why would, why would we not highlight that as well as rubber bands that also provide like that same type of stimulus, but now, you know, the damage uh, by itself is lowered yeah, substantially. If you look at all the categories <clears throat> of workout programs, the, the category that has the worst workout programming, the worst written exercises, the worst written workouts are the at-home workouts by far. If I, I mean, there's, there's bad workout programming all the way around, but when I look at, at like, you know, workout at gym workout programs or barbell and dumbbell based programs, a, a larger percentage, a much larger percentage of those I would say are written a better. The at-home workout programs, I have never actually ever seen an at-home, well-written, popular at-home workout program. They're terrible. There's a couple reasons for that. One is the audience that they're targeting. They're targeting people who don't want to go to the gym, just want to work out at home. They know it's more average, regular, everyday you know, Joe people who don't know the difference between a good and a bad workout. They just want to sweat at home. And if they're sore, then they think it's a good workout. And how do you market to them? I'm going to make it flashy, make it entertaining. I'm going to call it, you know, urban cowboy workout or, yeah. you know, Pilates, <laughs> yeah. you know, Pilates combat training or something weird, you know, combinations like that. And it's just terrible uh, workout program. The second reason, and I'm, this is 100% true. And, and if you're a trainer with a lot of experience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to design a good workout program without, I mean, a good, a well-made one that's going to you know, produce good results, it's going to be appropriate. It's a lot. It's scalable, meaning somebody as a beginner can continue to do this as they get stronger and more fit, or somebody could enter into it as an intermediate and advanced and still get great results. That requires way more knowledge and creativity when you don't have a lot of equipment. Mm. If I have tons of equipment, I still need to know what I'm doing. But you know, if I'm thinking of back exercise, I have you know 15 different options. When I'm thinking, oh, we don't have much equipment, we have a band yeah. uh, or maybe a pull-up bar. Like, okay, what are some of the movements I can do for correcting upper, you know, uh, posture or strengthening the back, or how am I going to work the glutes? Uh, effectively when I don't have any equipment or the quads or what about the calves or what about, you know, the shoulders, you know, I don't have anything I can press overhead. So how am I going to give this person a great workout with different angles? It requires more experience, 
more creativity, and you just it's just harder to do. So a lot of the program you see at home, it's just terrible. Yeah, I know you guys have been seeing like lots of uh, hilarious ideas, like creativity wise out there, what to do. With it. Like, my favorite, my personal favorite, I have to share this. Uh, was <laughs> this was technically, I guess it was a squatter. They were trying to target their their glutes, but they had their hands up in the air like this. They'd squat down. They come and then they do like a, a side bend, sort of trying to get their oblique to crunch, and then lift their leg oh up at the same time <laughs> with their arms up in the air like jazz hands. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, let's well, combine five different exercises. I mean, the, the person who's asking this question has probably already got a pretty good idea because the fact that you you notice that right away that many of these programs just throw burpees. In there and the reason why you see that in yeah. these workouts is, is it's an easy like a way burpee button it's such an easy way to elevate a client's heart rate and make the workout feel hard yeah, yeah. if you do 30 burpees and then you go to do a push-up a lunge a squat any other body weight movement it's hard because yeah. you just did 30 burpees well this is a, a time-tested trick it's just the same trick that parallels like supplements where they want you to feel something right away and then then you think it's working because i feel it like intensity is yeah. something that is overused because I feel it, so therefore this is good. Yeah, it used to be back in the day, jumping jacks. Then burpees became. Look, if you have a at, if you have an at home workout program that includes burpees and it's not an OCR training program, it's right. probably a bad program. It's right, probably right. a crappy program. Right. The only time burpees, not the only time, but for the most part, the only time burpees are pro appropriately programmed are when you're training for obstacle course racing, where burpees is part of the competition. Right. Uh, other than that. If you see it in your program, it's probably a or something program. high intense, but you got, yeah, the intent has to be there. Well, and to, we're hammering intensity, but I want to make it clear too, though, that it doesn't mean that a, uh, like an at home workout won't be, it, it can't be really challenging, really challenging, and then just laying into the intensity uh, without any sort of real thought behind the program. Well, you know, two lazy. different things. Yeah, because yeah, you can make, uh, I mean, how often do you guys get tagged in Maps Anywhere workouts where people are like, oh my God, that kicked my butt. That was hard. Sure. So yeah, it, it, it definitely can be hard. But here's here's another way too that's uh, is more simple for the person who doesn't understand what we're talking about with programming and exercise design. They're like, okay, I feel like you still didn't answer me. If you feel like when you're done, you got more of a cardiovascular workout from it than you got like a mm -hmm. muscle building workout in like you should feel a good muscle pump, muscle soreness from the next day more so than you feel like I just ran a mile. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what a lot of these these at home workouts are. They're just they're a bunch of exercises put in a circuit with low rest periods and really what that is is just more like cardio. It's less like it's more anaerobic than it is anabolic. You're not sending this big muscle building signal when you're not giving any rest period and you're constantly going from exercise to exercise. Yeah, if you, and here's the thing, aerobic yeah. doesn't require a lot of programming. It's actually not that hard. If you want to yeah, improve- jump your, rope. Yeah. yeah, you want to improve your aerobic capacity, then go you know, hike up a hill or do some sprints or jump in place. Yeah. You're going to get some of that. You don't need workout programming for that. But when it comes to- Building muscle, speeding up the metabolism, sculpting the body where you can actually shape the body because you're working and building muscle, that requires uh, more programming. And I'll, I'll say, I'll make this challenge all day long. I would put maps anywhere up against any at home workout program. And I would, 100, I'm fully confident it would be superior to 99.9% of the ones that I've seen what's out there. Mm -hmm. I've almost, I've never looked at an at-home program and said, wow, that was written well. It's never, almost never happened. We just need an infomercial. <laughs> Next question is from Shay Goes West. What are some of your favorite healthy food swaps? For example, I use Greek yogurt as a replacement for sour cream. Oh, this is Adam. This is your wheelhouse because yeah, of competition. You know? Well, yeah, no, I think that, I think that's a, a Greek yogurt can be used for uh, so many different things. Uh, Cocoa Whip. Um, is another really cool one that I use for like dessert cravings. Um, God, what are, it's been a while since I've actually thought in this direction of like different healthy foods. You know, you well, can add cinnamon yeah. to things uh, and add a little bit of stevia and cinnamon, and it just tastes like sugar. It tastes mm -hmm. like a like a sweet cinnamon. Yeah, when I was trying to lower my my alcohol consumption, it was definitely mineral water and lime and mint mm -hmm. and things like that to kind of dress it up, like garnish it at least, so it felt like you know I was still hanging out and partying. You know, because I can't have dairy, I forget uh, at all about all the great. Uh, dairy options and one food that it was a staple uh, for bodybuilders and competitors forever for for good reason it's cottage cheese cottage cheese is high in protein you can get low calorie versions of cottage cheese you can get higher calorie versions you can get full fat cottage cheese you could put that on almost everything or add fruit to it 
and it's inexpensive and it's a really really it's a really good source of protein and calories that you could dress up with fruit to to make it taste almost like a dessert. If this person's already on the Greek yogurt kick, I have something for you on Greek yogurt. You take Greek yogurt, you strain it over cheesecloth overnight in your refrigerator, dump out all the, the the extra stuff, then you whip like stevia or something in it, and then it turns it into like whipped cream, and then you dip like fruit into it, so it's a high protein whipped cream. Um, oh, that's another, interesting. another really good one is, uh, cauliflower. Cauliflower is phenomenal for replacing mm. like rices yeah. and pastas and crusts and Definitely breads. Pastas. Yeah. You that. can make, uh, ca- cauliflower, uh, crust. So anything that would require like some sort of a crust in it, uh, you could use it for that. It can, anything that you would normally use rice or pasta, you can make cauliflower into like rice or pasta bits and it tastes very similar or potatoes if you would normally do mashed potatoes or something like that use cauliflower instead yeah um so that's another go-to um that i used a lot to replace um have you guys ever had uh used spaghetti squash instead of that's that's another great one i love it we just had we just had that the other night we use spaghetti squash all the time Courtney's been doing that a lot since we went to the tahoe house with you guys and and you guys like cooked that that one night i think it was an option yeah you did spaghetti squash with uh, really good. with sauce, it's delicious. Or you can just do it with butter and a yeah. little bit of garlic. And then uh, Adam, I know in the past you've used um, like low fat ground turkey to make like lower calorie tacos. Oh or- yeah, no, I mean I actually I, I use that so much that I prefer that over beef now, just because how greasy that beef can be. So I've gotten so used to making my taco salads, my tacos like with ground turkey. I also use. Uh, lean ground turkey to boost the protein intake into pro and in, into breakfast. Breakfast is also a really hard hard one for people to get an extra you know 20 30 grams of protein. Most breakfast foods are carb centric, and so you know taking eggs and then adding like two or three ounces of ground turkey. I love we'll we'll make a huge you know Katrina will cook up you know, three, four plus pounds of, you know, lean ground turkey. And we use it like that in all kinds of different things. We'll use it in like a taco salad. We'll make tacos one mm-hmm. night. That's like a treat night for us. Or we'll use it, put it in our eggs. That'll boost the protein in it. So yeah, ground turkey is a, a definite go-to. Yeah, I've been me. doing wraps. And this is, again, this is more just like trying to go on the gluten-free side of things. Like I really do enjoy though, uh, like the lettuce wrap, like uh, burgers and, you know, and then wrapping like, um, like turkey wraps and things like that. Like it, you get to that crunch. So if you do like an iceberg lettuce or something like that, it definitely like gives you that still kind of a good feel when you're eating a burger. What did are I, those? Did, what I, are I, make, the, did I make the rice paper wonton thing for you guys? Have no. I, okay. So here's another cool one. I know I just, I wasn't ready for this question. Um, so we, we take a, uh, you know, what are those like uh, muffin or cupcake pans, you know, yeah, with yeah, them, like yeah, to yeah. where you would make muffins or cupcakes uh-huh. in or whatever. And you can get uh, uh, wonton rice paper, which is like nothing, right? It's like they're it's. Oh, little, I've had this. Yeah, yeah and and then you and then you put them in those little uh, cupcake things, so they they fold up like a like a wonton, and then you put ground turkey, a tiny bit of your favorite cheese, tomato, salsa, or whatever. Throw it in the oven. The cheese kind of melts over, the, and then you have these little. You know, rice paper, ground turkey, and cheese and salsa, little snacks, and it's like extremely low calorie. That sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take. You know, I mean, literally, one ounce or less of cheese will do the entire cupcake uh, pan. So that's the like, cheese is probably the highest calorie, highest fat thing that you're putting on there. The lean ground turkey is extremely lean. Tomato salsa, that's virtually nothing. The rice paper is virtually nothing, and it gives you that crunch texture, like you're having chips or something with it. So, what's that? Snack. What are those tortillas that that are like grain free? They're made with like cassava, cassava flour. Yeah, yeah they're they're low calorie, um, and you can make all kinds of delicious things with that. You can make quesadillas. You can make you could make bur- you know, burritos that are that are low calorie mm-hmm. with those. And then uh, uh, when I first met you, Adam, you told me about how to make. Like a, like how to make shredded chicken. You would get chicken breasts and you put them in like a crock pot and then you shred it and add uh, it with salsa. Yeah, so that was like a, that's low calories. Really yeah, good. that was a go to. So the go to meal. Uh, this was actually my staple uh, peak week meal where I would we would boil chicken, which you would think would be terrible, but I would boil it either crock pot it or boil a, a bunch of it, and then we would we shred it up real real thin, and then I'd put it over. White rice with uh, um, salsa and avocado. That's it, and it would taste like a burrito bowl. Really good. And with the green, and I use green salsa. I like. I prefer that for this. So green salsa, avocado over shredded chicken in a rice bowl, and oh, it would. It was like such a treat, and it's lower calorie, high in protein. Um, it was my favorite, like peak meal or peak week meal that I would have. Excellent. 
Next question is from Kyle Grego. Do you have any book recommendations for the quarantine? Oh, I definitely do. Um, I don't recommend reading nonfiction necessarily unless it's, uh, you know, escape. So unless it's something you can read about historically that kind of takes you away from the current, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think you should read books on viruses or, you know, how to like, you know, how to be, you know. Or like revelation. Yeah, yeah. nothing scary. You know, that, you want to, books are really good at calming uh, the, the mind and the soul if you use them uh, properly. My favorite books when I'm stressed out are books that help me work on my, my, my spiritual self, on my sense of acceptance. One of my favorite books for this was uh, by Eckhart Tolle, um, A New Earth. Now, Eckhart Tolle is, you, many people consider him a spiritual leader, um, but it's not religious. He doesn't talk about anything metaphysical in, in his books. He talks a lot about the ego and why the, why, the, why the human consciousness creates the ego and how you know it, it causes a lot of pain and suffering in us. And he talks a lot about how to accept reality and how to be more present. And I read this book. Uh, or I read most of this book with Jessica uh, maybe a couple of years ago, so something she introduced me to, and it had a profound effect on me. You know, it was like two or three years ago. It was maybe a couple of years out of you know getting divorced and working through the whole dual custody thing with my kids. Very very stressful, difficult time, and that book really really helped me. And that's something that I could see that I could pick up right now that would really help me in the current situation because the current situation is characterized by uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on. Um, we can put ourselves in a lot of pain just by thinking and imagining potential. What if? What if I lose my job? What if I lose my house? What if my, my, I get sick? What if my parents get sick? What if this thing explodes? Oh my gosh. And that's us living outside of the present. Um, and that tends to cause a lot of pain. And the book, A New Earth, is all about how to get out of that, how to exercise and practice getting out of that um, and give yourself a, a better sense of calm. Yeah, I've been um, going through a book actually with Courtney as well uh, as Fingerprints of the Gods. You know Graham Hancock. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it it's great because it's uh, it gives you a lot of like um, ancient history and and things that um, you know are are somewhat on the fringe in terms of like being accepted uh, as fact or or you know the theory and and it's just it, it's just kind of a fun way to kind of look back at history and see how they're trying to kind of put all the dots together and it's it's super fascinating uh, to see how you know certain rituals were practiced certain things like I didn't know about certain civilizations and he has like a follow up book too about like America before so the Americas have a lot more history that's just being uncovered now uh, that 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 you know they're they're finding all these different uh, um, like his, like sites that they're uncovering, uh, you know. So it, it's just really fascinating to me. It's just to get into uh, stuff like that. Like it, it, it sparks my curiosity. You don't got any Adam? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> uh, little blue truck. What's that? Uh, that's what I oh, was you've reading. been reading your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was reading. Normally, I have like lots of uh, book recommendations, and normally, when somebody messages me, the uh, the response I normally have is like, "What do you like to read first before I recommend?" Uh, a good read because it really matters that matters to me like if you're not like for example I, I just recently finished a book that is probably made uh, for sure my top 20 uh, maybe even my top 10 which was uh, you know how how an income uh, how an economy grows and why it dies oh you talked about that too. I, I think that was that was like who wrote that uh, Peter Schiff is it Peter Schiff yeah Peter okay. Schiff oh, I yeah. believe uh, wrote that um, and then I'm, I'm wrapping up right now, uh, Don Yeager's, uh, great teams. Uh, so I think it's the, the 16 things or 16 te things that uh, all great teams do. Uh, that one's cool. So the great, the great teams is a great one for leadership. So if you're in a, a leadership position and, and developing a team, a staff, or you enjoy some, and you love sports analogies, that one was, is a very entertaining read that I'm reading right now. Um, and then the economy one by Peter Schiff. I mean, to me, that is, I will reread that book to my son when he gets to the age where he can understand, uh, economics, where we can have a discussion on that. And believe it or not, I could probably read that too, even though like you would think, oh, what kid wants to listen to economics? They tell it in a, uh, like a kid's story, which is, it made it phenomenal. Like Katrina doesn't even like, uh, reading or learning about any of that stuff. She kind of leaves that in, uh, for me. And I got her to to listen to that book after I read it, 
and she loved it uh, because it, it's just very entertaining the way they tell a story. And I think it pertains to where we're at right now because a lot of times when we're, we're all freaked out uh, right now and everybody's uh, scared to lose their job or have lost their job already and uh, you know, we're, a lot of people are excited that we have this trillion dollar bailout, it gives you a different perspective when you really understand how this economy was built originally. We forget about that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think we, we especially us, we were, we're so we came so much later than we're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Yeah. And and sometimes the the policies and the things that we roll out or the things that we think are great. Um, we have no idea the rippling effect that it potentially could have on our economy. And when you have a really good understanding of how this economy was built from zero, like when nothing was being sold or traded or bought, and and when you understand the history of it really well, it gives you a greater perspective of uh, like what we're currently going through and how we should be handling times like this. And it's done in a, in a, in a children's story. So I, I, I can't recommend that book enough. I think it's an important read right now for most people. It's a book I'll reread to my, my son for sure. Mm, there, there's a book I recommend uh, for you, for your kid. It's called uh, Nobody Knows How to Make a Pizza. You told me that. I wrote that down. Yeah, that one's a really good one. It's by uh, Julie Borowski, and it's it explains how no single person knows how to make a pizza when you consider – all the things that go into it from who grows the tomatoes to who makes the, the equipment that, you know, that gets the tomatoes to who makes the fertilizers to who, who grows the wheat. And, and you start to realize that there's millions of people that are involved in producing things that we take for granted. Yeah, I have it's a so feeling wonderful. it's going to be very similar mm -hmm. to this one because that's the, they, their whole – instead of a pizza, they use, uh, you know, an island where the, uh, the commodity is fish. You know, this is before money existed. Mm -hmm. This is before anything uh, – and the only way that you could live was you could catch a fish a day. And every at that point in time, uh, everybody had the capability to probably catch one fish a day. It took that you didn't you didn't have a pole, you didn't have a net, you didn't have anything. It took all day long you would get to catch one fish, and you, that basically what it took for you to survive until innovation happened. Somebody then made a net, and then it talks about how that how the the entire economy grew from that, and they use. Uh, real characters today, like uh, you'll, but they give them fake names, so you'll know when they're like talking about a politician mm -hmm. or a policy. So they, they 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 include that into the story. So it's very well done, and the way they give the the analogies off of fishing and how that was a commodity, and then it, and then how the economy grew from that, and they and then of course there's challenges where you know at one point uh, that you know the the net's been made, and then other people on the on the island feel that they ha should have the right to use his net and so Interesting. yeah they help you and then at the end of every chapter they they actually summarize and work through the challenge and why it's important to, to decide to go this way or that way and what the long lasting effect uh, yeah you told me this a while ago i still haven't looked at you it definitely too. know how to eat a yeah. pizza yeah so. hey, you know how to eat one yeah i um it's interesting i was watching a a, a video by um i forgot it might have been bishop Barron. And he was talking about obviously his his standpoint is from the the Christian religion, but he I consider him a very strong spiritual leader, and so I think there's a lot of wisdom in listening to someone like him uh, and and other spiritual leaders from maybe other practices. But he said something interesting. He said uh, uh, God like God likes it when people feel weak, and it makes a lot of sense. I think that's when people seek out you know spiritual guidance. That's when growth happens, right? When you feel confident and like, nothing's bothering you and everything's great. That's when you tend to not try to meditate or tend to not pray or tend to not seek out spiritual growth. So other books that may be excellent to pick up during this period of time are books on spirituality. Um, there's, the, of course, the great spiritual texts from the major religions, you know, the the Bible and, you know, Buddhist teachings. Which that's a heavy read and, for the first time. Sure, <laughs> but, but I yeah. think if, you know, or maybe books about spiritual, you know, these spiritual books. You're right, it is heavy reading. Or a book maybe, about how to read it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think th this might be a good opportunity, you know, if you're finding yourself like, oh, I need to get rid of this anxiety and stress and I need to read something. Spiritual growth is, uh, I mean, you, you grow faster and stronger when you feel scared, spiritually speaking, than when you feel great and confident and everything's going on is going great. So 
those might be some good options or, or books in that in that category. I I, th- I recommended it to Jessica. Did you read? I know she did, right? Uh, Purpose Driven Life. Uh, no, I didn't read it, but she told me about it. So. And she said she's it. my Cliff Notes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she liked it, right? She did. She loved it. Yeah, that's a phenomenal. Yeah, read she for liked that, it a lot, along, so. along those lines. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. Um, we help you with everything, including how to build your arms, how to get a tight midsection, burn body fat, build muscle, um, how to eat healthier. I mean, it's all there's tons and tons of resources there. They're all totally free. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find Adam, Justin, and myself on Instagram. That's where we're most active in terms of social media. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal, and you can find Adam at mindpumpadam. 